Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is part of the What Would You Do collab and I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. I have created for you three beautiful pieces made out of wood. I hope you like them and let's go ahead and get started. DIY number one. For this project, I'm going to be using the shadow box from the Dollar Tree. And first thing I want to do, just take off this piece that was taken out and it kind of pulled off some of the paper. So I decided to go ahead and pull it as much as possible. And then I sand it off just to make it smooth. Now, this is where I made a mistake. If you're recreating this, please go ahead and peel everything off. It's going to make it so much easier. Okay, so next step I did was to take this Waverly chalk paint in a color ink and I gave it two, three, two and a half <laughs> good coats because I wanted to cover everything. I didn't want any imperfections. I wanted to cover everything, but when everything was dry, this is how it looked like very patchy and you could even feel and see the writing underneath. So yeah, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, try plan B. So I'm taking this, um, craft paper in a color black, matte black, and I am just tracing it and cutting it out. So this will fit perfectly inside and I'll put that aside for now. And now I'll take uh, the pavement, which is dark gray and a white acrylic paint. And I, I've got this beautiful gray color and I am going to just paint the frame inside and outside as well. Um, and doesn't matter if I'm not precise from the inside because I will um, put this black um, craft paper on top anyway and for that I will go ahead and use a Mod Podge so I uh, applied one coat of Mod Podge on the bottom of the shadow box and just put this paper on top so in a high uh, in at the end everything turned out really really nice and I'm happy with this okay next I'm taking this grapevine um, mini wreath I got it from uh, some previous product actually from some uh, thrift store item and then I saved it. Now I'm just making it a little bit smaller. I'm kind of like um, um, tightening up and making sure everything is nice and secure. Now I'm going um, and taking this greenery from the Dollar Tree and I'm just putting it in and securing a little bit with the hot glue, even though it was challenging because this greenery has kind of like a coating on it. So most of it I just um, pushed through the um, wreath and it stayed that way. Then I apply a little bit of hot glue on top I um, put that down in my shadow box and now I'm taking this uh, white jute twine, cotton twine from the Dollar Tree, taking three strands and just braiding them all the way. And then I made a knot on both ends so it doesn't unravel. And now I will just go ahead and create a very, very simple bow, like a shoe lace tying bow, that's what I usually say. And then I will attach that with a hot glue on the top of my wreath. And then I will kind of fluff out the edges just to make it a little bit fuller and then the next thing i will take this um, sign that i actually got from the dollar tree it is a wooden sign that says family and i will just add hot glue on the bottom and i will attach it to the bottom of my shadow box and that will be it for this project oh my gosh i'm so excited about this project because it is so simple so beautiful it is timeless it can be um, used any time of the year it can be switched out. You can add different color of the bow if you want for different season or different greenery or flowers. But I like as it is and I, I think it's so beautiful and it was so easy to make and of course inexpensive. Tell me what you think about this one. As I mentioned at the beginning, this video is part of the What Would You Do collaboration with these amazing ladies. I'm so excited to be partnering with them. Um, the person that actually got us all together is my friend Jenny over at Lovely Moments Creating. She is extra talented. She always has wonderful ideas and such a sweet person. I'm going to have her link uh, in the description box as well as the playlist. So make sure to go ahead and check out all these ladies and what they have created. DIY number two. For this product, I'm taking these painter sticks, large painter sticks uh, from uh, Home Improvement Store. They were three for 98 cents. And I'm gonna cut them all out seven inches, um, in seven inches pieces. So now I have 16 of them. First, I'm gonna just sand out the edges a little bit, make sure they're nice and 
uh, smooth and then it's time to attach um, two pieces at a time. I'm using a hot glue with, uh, in combination with the wood glue. More wood glue than hot glue. I wanted this really to stay um, for a long time. I am um, just creating an L shape, pretty much just gluing the edges and um, securing them. I did that to all the remaining pieces and then um, I actually put a little bit of uh, wood glue in the cracks just to make sure everything is nice and um, filled and there's no gaps and it's secured. Okay, now I'm going to show you how actually I uh, glue them offset, which when, when I put them together, they will be, um, you see a little bit of offset, which will make it kind of a cute little pattern. Okay, now that I have all of these um, L-shaped pieces done, I'm going to start creating the square piece. So I'm just attaching two L-shaped to another two L-shaped together and um, again using a hot glue in a combination with the wood glue and I left that to dry. I did it to all four uh, squares and then I'm gonna actually go ahead and start attaching them together on the top of each other. Again using a lot of wood glue and some hot glue just to attach it. And um, like I said, I made sure that to put them kind of offset. So the pattern, it's not the same between the each square, if that makes sense. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, especially when you see um, when it's all done. So I'm attaching all four of them. And then after I was done with that, I made sure to clean out all the wood glue that um, came out on the sides. And then I'm putting something heavy, like two boards that I had and, uh, you know, this weight and left it to dry several hours. When everything was dry, this is how it looks like. And you can see clearly pattern that I was talking about over here in the corners. Okay, next thing to do will be to take Jenga blocks and I glued three together like I'm showing over here and I'm going to do that to all of them, all of the rest. So now I have four pieces of three and I'm going to put them, glue them, um, in the corners of this box. So a little bit of hot glue and a lot of wood glue again, and I will put them in the corners. So this will make everything even more secured. I really wanted this piece to be sturdy because it is going to be outdoor. Now you can use nails if you want to secure even further, but for me, I think this will sturdy enough. Now that I have all four corners secured, I am taking these leftovers of these painter sticks um, kind of the curvy part and I took five of them that's going to be a bottom but I have to mark where I need to cut it off because it doesn't fit exactly perfectly and then after, uh, after that I'm taking one extra and I'm just hot gluing it on top to keep all this in place after that I'm cutting it all out with my um, jigsaw and then after cutting it all off it fits perfectly now I'm taking my pencil and mark it off lines on the sides where additional jagger blocks will come and that will um, actually hold that bottom in place. I don't know if there's any other way to do this but this is how I did it. I really wanted that bottom to be flushed with my box. So after I put all four of the jagger blocks, two of them were um, you know um, sideways um, and then two of them are positioned differently as you can see. And then I am going to go ahead and attach attach the bottom. I really like that I used these leftovers of a painter sticks, first of all, because I used it all up. And second, because there is some holes on them and that's great for draining because this is going to be a planter. Especially if you're gonna not going to use any kind of um, bag like I will. I'll show you in a minute. Okay, now that everything is glued and secured, Next thing will be to go ahead and um, stain this. I'm using this uh, wood stain in a gray color by Very Thin and I gave it um, one really good coat. Now this is not perfect and I didn't care for it to be perfect because I will distress it later. So this is just like a base coat for me. And after I was done, this is how it looks like. I did a little bit inside just for it to be consistent but nothing perfect. After that I'm taking this Rust-Oleum chalk paint in a linen white color and chippy brush from the Dollar Tree and I'm distressing it. I'm distressing it a lot. Um, I really wanted it to be um, you know rustic and weathered 
and after everything was done this is how it looks like next step will be to take um, antique wax by Waverly and I uh, again use the same chippy brush and I really didn't add a lot just here and there I wanted to have that brown you know color showing through and then when everything was done this is how it looks like now I love this level of distressing and I love how it turned out next will be to take a large ziploc bag that I had on hand or anything else you have cut off the top and then I will actually place it inside I flip the top portion and then I'm just putting it in now you can use stapler if you want but I decided to go ahead with this um, craft double-sided tape and just pressing it down and uh, attaching my bag with it so this bag will be the one to hold my plant in next thing to do will be to take um, you know polyurethane and um, seal everything down after that I'm taking these hooks four of them and each will go in one corner and I um, actually twisted them um, screw them in the Jenga block or actually Jenga blocks okay after this was done I am gonna use this nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and this um, plant holder from the Dollar Tree I took the whole nautical rope and I um, you know uh, created four uh, strands I actually cut cut it off and made sure there's four exact same length and then I am tying a knot and securing it that way with addition of a hot glue to the um, each loop a loop hook I'm sorry <laughs> hook and now that I have all four of them I will go ahead make sure they're all nice and straight and I will secure them with a hot glue towards the top of these um, uh, nautical ropes rope pieces and then after these are secured in place I'm gonna take um, two strands of the juice twine and I'll just wrap it a few times around that way it will be extra secured when it's hanging okay so now that I have this part done I think the only thing left to do will be to add my plants and this is how it turned out I am super super happy with everything I love the color I love how it turned out it is a beautiful rustic planter it was very easy to make I used four packs of uh, these painter sticks so that's four dollars and nautical rope and a hook so that's a total of six dollars for this beautiful beautiful planter and I absolutely love how it turned out but as always I would like to hear what do you guys think of course you can stain this any way you want paint it any way you want this is what I decided to do now while we're still outside I wanted to show you a new addition that we got to this uh, backyard are these solar lights we have tried so many solar lights and none of them really were shining bright at night and these are the only ones that actually sh uh, are shining so so nice it's perfect ambience and it just gives us just enough light in our dark backyard and I absolutely love them and uh, they come in a pack of six and I will uh, have the link in the description box and I'm trying to find a code um, discount code for you guys and when I do I'm going to make sure to link that as well but if you're in a need for something like this these are perfect not only they're stylish but they really look they really shine really bright and they are really good so I recommend them for sure If you're new to my channel, if you're coming from this collaboration, or if you just came across my channel, welcome, I'm Yelena. I love crafting, doing DIY projects, and everything that I do is on a budget. I do all kinds of styles, rustic, farmhouse, and some modern style as well. So if something like that interests you, please join my channel. I would really love to have you just come and say hi. Also, if you are on a social media, I'm on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. Again, come say hi, I would love to get to know you. I want to remind you that my regular upload times are Tuesdays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Sometimes that changes because of the collaborations or challenges I participate in, but I always try to let you know in advance. Okay, last DIY, DIY number three. I'm going to start with these um, uh, clothespins from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to go ahead and separate them. I ended up using 17 of them, but this is just, you know, personal preference. 
I opened all of them, separated them, and then I'm going to take this Dollar Tree canvas, 6x8. First thing, I am going to get a mixture of these uh, two colors, so um, white acrylic paint and dark gray to create this lighter gray color. And I am going to paint my canvas all the way, so sides and the um, whole canvas. So it doesn't matter if it's the color is not perfect or anything like that. I think that gives a character. So now I'm just positioning these pieces of clothespins all the way around. There's no really particular pattern, just whatever you think it looks good. That's what I went with. When I position them the way I want it and when I was completely happy with the way it looks like, it is time to take one at a time and hot glue it to the canvas. And that's pretty much it to this project. So, you know, very simple, very inexpensive. So it cost me only a dollar and a half to finish this project. But, you know, I like to share these kind of things. I like to share with you how easy and inexpensive you can create some beautiful decor for your home. And this particular decor is very modern and just so, so beautiful. And you know, I would say minimalistic because it doesn't require a lot and it's very neat and clean. So as always, I want to hear what do you guys think. If you like this video, please uh, give it a thumbs up and share it. If you're new, please subscribe. I would really love to have you. Tell me in the comments which one was your favorite. Uh, make sure to check out the description box for the playlist. And um, I want to tell you that there is something exciting going on. I am going to start my own challenge starting in August. So keep your eyes open in my social media and in my future videos. I'll explain more. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.